Hello everyone. Today we are going to be making some uh, winter mittens with pattern. So this is my example of my winter mittens. I don't have my mittens attached to my little piece of background paper. And if you don't have a piece of background paper, that is fine. You, we can still make our mittens uh, without a piece of paper to glue it down on. So I'm gonna move my mittens for later, my example mittens and my little piece of background paper because I don't need that just yet. What I will need is a pencil. I'll need a pair of scissors. Uh, if you have background paper, then you might need uh, a glue stick or some tape. And let's see, I'm also going to need something to color with. Today I have um, crayons, a bunch of crayons. And I'm going to need a piece of paper and my hand. I'm gonna move these out of the way. Uh, I'm using a piece of leftover copy paper that just extra paper that just kind of came out of the, the printer. Um, so it's really not, you know, good for much else except for sketching or maybe, you know, drawing on the back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this piece of paper uh, messy side out. I'm going to line up the corners. I'm going to fold it down and then I am going to gently it okay there we go so now I have my folded piece of paper I'm gonna lay it down on the table and I'm gonna take my hand I'm gonna lay my hand on the paper these fingers are going to be together and the thumb is going to be out because it is supposed to look like a mitten we're gonna trace our hand but we're not gonna trace around the fingers okay we're just gonna kind of go over the top and when we're tracing Okay, instead of holding our pencil down at the bottom and resting our hand on the table like we do when we're writing, we're gonna slide our hand up the pencil and we're gonna hold our pencil so that the eraser is pointing at the ceiling. Okay, just like that. So I'm gonna start over here by my wrist and I don't actually have to touch the side of my hand. I just wanna get close. Holding my pencil nice and straight down here towards the thumb. My hand has to fit on the paper though. Can't have fingers and things hanging off the edges. Okay, so there is my mitten. I am going to uh, I'm kind of move my line over here a little bit. And then on the bottom, I'm gonna make a, a little shape like that. It looks kind of like a cuff. I'm not really gonna draw anything on it because we're gonna use the other side. Now we are going to make two gloves and we want them to be the same. So that is why we folded our paper. We're gonna keep the paper folded while we're cutting, okay? Right, thumb in the small hole, fingers. I, I can't fit all my fingers in there, but that's okay. I can fit as many fingers in there as is comfortable. And I am going to now I wanna show you this, just so you know, when I am cutting something and there are two layers, I kind of trap them between my fingers, right? And, and kind of hold it with my, you know, you'll find what works for you, but uh, it, it helps me so that the paper doesn't move around. Yes, I want it to. So I am going to cut around both. It's going to make two shapes and they are going to be symmetrical. So when, I, when I'm finished cutting, I'll show you what I mean. Symmetrical means the same on both sides. So now I'm gonna take my little mittens and they are the same, okay? It's the same shape, it's just kind of like a mirror, a mirror image, right, on the shape. So the next thing that I'm gonna do, you don't have to use your pencil for this, but um, we are gonna be drawing some pattern. Let me, let me get my other mittens out here, okay? So you get to draw whatever kind of pattern you would like to on your mittens, okay? We've got stripes and polka dots and lines and shapes, right, color all of those things, and we are gonna create some patterns. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to find a nice dark blue, 
and I'm going to draw my lines with a crayon. This kind of removes the step, I suppose. And I am going to, right, if I draw something on this mitten, I'm going to try to draw it the other way on this mitten. It's kind of challenging sometimes because you kind of have to flip back and forth. I'm definitely going to make a line right here. That's going to be the cuff, the cuff of my mitten. And I might even make some lines on it right there, just like that. Okay. And I might divide my mitten into some uh, different, different places. Let's see. So uh, I'm going to make some lines. So I'll make a line right there and a line right there. Maybe I'll measure about halfway. Make another line about halfway and make a line right there. Those looks like those look like some nice areas to color in. And now I get to have all kinds of fun making my patterns. So you get to make whatever patterns you would like to make. I'm gonna put some red violet stripes on my mitten in between these two lines. I'm gonna make my patterns match. So whatever I do on the one glove, I'm going to do on the other, but you don't have to do that. Sometimes gloves or socks are made on purpose not to match and that's okay too. Remember when we're making patterns that a pattern is something that is repeated. So you can have patterns in music, patterns um, in behavior, right? If you always do the same thing when a dog barks at you, uh, that could be a pattern of behavior. Um, you know, patterns of color and line and shapes. Let's see, what else? I'm going to put, I just realized I didn't turn on my fancy work light. I hope this is not too dark for you. Let's see what happens when I turn on the fancy work light. Ooh, that's better. All right. Some of the shapes I might leave open and some of the shapes uh, I will color. Now I'm not going to color the whole entire mitten because I think that's something that you can probably uh, do on your own, right? I know you guys are really good at making patterns because I've seen some of the patterns that you make already. So I think what I'm going to do is just show you a couple other things and, and then you guys can start doing your own coloring. Um, I will show you that one of the things that I like to do uh, on the thumbs, right? When I make lines on the thumbs, instead of just making them straight across, I curve them a little bit. I might curve the line a little bit. That just kind of makes it look like, like this is something that is curved, that it's, that it's a little round. Okay. Boop. That's a contour line. We will learn more about those later. So, uh, I'm also going to show you if you want, if you want to know, right, how to make this nice snowflake. Um, you don't have to put a snowflake in here. You can put whatever you want to on the glove but I just thought I would show you how I made it. And I did use a pencil for that just because Josephine. Um, so I am going to draw a little circle in the middle. It doesn't have to be a circle. Okay, and then I am going to draw some lines coming off of the circle. You could make eight lines, but real snowflakes all have six sides. That's just how they're made. And then once you have that, you can start adding things. So here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this one right next to it so you can kind of see how I do this. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna put this little arrow. And again, you can put whatever shapes you want if you decide to make a snowflake. Because right, no snowflake, no two snowflakes are the same, they say. Um, so now what I'm going to do is this line right here, I'm just going to kind of make a little mark at what looks like the halfway, right? And it doesn't have to be exactly halfway. You can eyeball that. 
and like that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a little dot, kind of like this, all the way around on the inside. Now that I have those markings, all I have to do is connect the dots. dots. There we go. And then finally, I just drew some little extra lines in there. You can make uh, snowflake as fancy or as simple as you like. And then I traced it and colored it. And that is, that is really what we're working on. So once you're finished, if you have a piece of paper, then you could cut out your mittens well, no, you've already cut your mittens out. You can um, glue your mittens, right? Or tape them. Just remember that if you're going to use tape, if you can, if you need a grown up to help you do it, it's so much nicer if we don't see the tape on the outside. So we make a little ring of tape and then we tape our mitten down. You could put more than one of those little rings under there if you want to, but that way, uh, stays put. All right. So enjoy. I hope you have a great time making your mittens. And um, if you finish your mittens and you have a grown up at home, they can take a photo and upload it to our Google Classroom or even send it to my email. I will. I love to see them and I will send you a response. And, uh, and that's it. So have a good time. And I hope I see your work soon.